on this episode we attempt to write efficient code. This is incredibly inefficient. We drink coffee and understand things. What? I... Mm. And most importantly, we stay positive. Today is not a good day. Oh, hi everybody, this is Christian from Laserdiffs Academy. Welcome to the advanced math tutorial. Things are getting crazy advanced today. We are going to be looking at um, tweaking a little bit our schedule editor. The last time around we worked a lot on an editor that allows us to schedule enemy spawns and it's looking good, but it could be better. And that's what we're doing today. Uh, right, so yeah, we have a bunch of enemies spawning here. We have like this V formation. Um, pay attention to this V formation. This is going to be actually quite an important aspect. We have this little clump here. Um, there's an X crawl happening. We can click to spawn more enemies. But is that really the way we want to create enemies? Hmm. There's also, before we get into that, there's also actually another thing I want to talk about, uh, I want to deal with today. And that is, there is a little bit of a bug and I want to fix that bug. Um, so if you want, if you press T, then it switches to this mode. And if you press M, it switches back to this mode. If you press T, it switches to this mode. If you press M, it switches to this mode. If you press P, T, nothing happens. And I, I like in between the episodes, I try to find out what the problem is. Um, uh, we kind of had a pro similar problem previously. It's just, uh, it's, it's an easy fix, easy fix. Um, we're gonna go in the update function uh, and we're gonna go here is where we're uh, switching from the table mode to the map mode. And here is where we're switching from the map mode to the table mode. There is a bit, a bit of a difference between those two <laughs> and it's not obvious immediately. So when we're switching to the table mode, we're doing it at the end of the update function for the map. At the very end, we're switching to the, ta to the table view, um, or we're checking if we're switching to the table view. When we are in the table mode and we're switching to the map view, we're doing it at the very beginning of the update function. And there is a whole bunch of stuff happening afterwards. And I think what is happening, that's my theory here. I, I haven't actually like tracked down exactly <laughs> why it's, <laughs> that thing is happening. But I think what's happening is you switch to the map mode but then you execute all the code that is responsible for the table view. And then that messes up with the map mode somehow. It, it like switches back or something, I don't know. But um, the fix is to do a return here. So after we switch to the map mode, we, we just don't do anything else. And in fact, in order to be really, really sure that nothing funky happens, we can also refresh the map here. And we can also do like a refresh Mm, table here, like so. And um, we can also return here just in case we, we mess it around later on with the code. Maybe we add something afterwards and then, you know, you wanna make sure that when you switch to the table view, you absolutely end the update function. So now when we switch to the table view, it looks like this, MT, 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 MT. So we can switch back and forth seamlessly now. That's what we wanted. Or oh, without any bugs, that's what we wanted. <laughs> Right, let us go back to, to the actual map mode. Let's get back to map mode. So as I said, um, we kind of have to think about the UI of this entire thing. And there is one aspect which I think is quite important. And that is uh, we never see, like right now we don't see the scroll value anywhere on the screen. The scroll there is actually quite important because that's where the enemies spawn. Like we, the schedule is like at a certain scroll value and the enemy spawns. And we kind of want to visualize this a little bit. Another thing I kind of like don't, don't like is that, you know, when the enemies are on the screen, they have already spawned. The actual spawn event has already happened in the past. So when I see an enemy on the screen, that's not when an enemy spawns. The enemy spawns when it's above the screen. So it's kind of weird. We are editing things at a moment where they're not visible and we only see them, the things that we created, only after the fact, after the thing that we set up has already happened. It's a bit of a problematic situation that we're gonna have to deal with today. 
uh, I think a good step in the right direction is just like, first of all, just to show the scroll value and not just like to show a number. I think it would be a nice or be a good idea to show a kind of a timeline. You know, you have like a, like in editing programs, you have a timeline when you see like a, your, your entire video stretched out as like a, like a sequence of like little, like a, like a ruler basically. And you place things on a timeline and you see like a, like a cursor going through the timeline. You can see how the different video, video clips switch from one to another. That's a cool way of editing something that happens over time. And I kind of want to also include a timeline here. Now, in our case, um, horizontal timeline makes no sense because we're scrolling up and down. So we have to make a uh, vertical timeline. Let's try to do that. How are we going to do this? Well, let's, let's, let's just try something. So this is draw, right? This is draw. Um, that's where we stop the, the, here's where we draw the cursor. We want to draw the timeline before the cursor. So let's do like a timeline thing. Let us just do four, like a four next loop. For i equals zero to 16, do, let's just draw 16 ticks on a timeline. And then let's just do like a little, little printer Rui. I'm gonna print at zero. Uh, well, the, it's gonna be just like a little tick here, right? Uh, and then uh, the X position is going to be zero and the Y position is going to be uh, I multiplied by, so the height of a text character is like each letter is five pixel high, but uh, we want to maybe have spacing between the letters. So we're going to make it six high and yeah. And that's, oh yeah, but the color is going to be seven. I want to make a white timeline. Right, so now you see the, those ticks on the left side of the screen. That's kind of like our timeline. Uh, 16 is not enough. Let's let's see what how much how many we, we get to fill the screen with. 18, 19, 20. Yeah, it seems like 20. 20 makes sense. When you do 21, we don't see them anymore, right? Let's make them let's make them zeros instead of uh, dashes. Yeah, okay, let's sure. Let's let's go with 21. Okay. Zeros are obviously not cool, and we kind of want to maybe do like a space, something like here maybe, something like this, let's try that. Yeah, so now we kind of have like a timeline. It would be nice when we're scrolling to uh, see some numbers associated with the timeline. I think that makes sense. So may let's maybe, hmm, we have to maybe, hmm, there's, there's gotta be a cursor, right? There's gotta be a cursor at some point, like maybe here, right? At this position, this middle value here that should have the number of the actual, you know, like this is now, um, this is the current scroll value. It should be printed here, right? So let's try to do that. Um, hmm, how are we going to do this? So which number is that? So we're drawing 22. So I guess at 11, at value 11. So we're gonna do something like, let's try, if i equals 11, then else. This is, this is a quick and dirty thing. I'm trying to, you know, find during the coding, I'm gonna find the, the correct way of doing this. So, and then we're gonna do like a scroll, right? Um, something like this. Okay, so now you see my scroll value at the cursor. Is that a cool center? Yeah, I guess I'm always interested in the more interested in the things that are coming up. So it's kind of like because if we if we could put it at the, at the number ten, that's a bit higher. Although maybe 10, 10, 10 actually feels correct. Ten feels correct. Ten feels correct. Good. Okay, so ten feels correct. But first of all, I don't want to have I don't want to be able to scroll into negatives. I want actually my timeline to end. Uh, and also maybe I want to, hmm, let, let me re reinvent this a little bit. So maybe I want to make it like, make it like this. First, I want to draw the scroll. I, first, I want to draw the number and then I want to add the tick, like something like this. I'm going to see why in a second. So. And then maybe like this. Yeah, 
that feels better. So let's make it like tick tick. Yeah, something like this. So I see the number of the scroll value here and then um, so the idea here is that later on behind each of those lines, if there's enemy spawning, I will I will see them so I can see the spawning, the actual spawning events. Because if I see an enemy here on the screen, that's not the spawning event. That's the enemy that spawned afterwards and how they're moving on the screen afterwards. But I want to be able to, to kind of visualize the data underneath, the data of the actual spawning events. You know, the stuff that you see here in a table view, you know, these are just numbers, right? But these are all the spawning events and they're also associated with numbers. I want to be able to see those numbers or kind of like see those spawning events in the actual, in the actual uh, map view, right? So that's, that's what, what I'm working myself towards. So good, let's go do something like local um, I -S 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 -E -R, I scroll equals um, cur scroll, uh, no, not scroll, so the scroll value. Um, plus i plus i minus 10 right uh, and then we're just gonna always print i scroll does that, does that work yeah it starts at zero that's good yeah. good and then um, we can always print it so we always see a number so it's really good. So now you see now you see that kind of like the timeline, you see the individual scroll values. Now you do, we don't have a cursor now anymore. We don't see like a value that is like highlighted anymore. That's, that's not good. Um, also, we're having problems that sometimes the scroll values change the number of digits. So we want to take it. Also, I want to see like what's the maximum scroll value. Yeah, so we got into quadruple di digits, right? That's a game that goes into quadruple digits, but not much more. Like we're probably not going to hit um, five digits. So that's good to know. Okay, um, first of all, I don't want to print the number on every frame. So we're going to some, do something like um, if i equals 10 or ESC, ESCR modulo 5 equals 0, then something like this. So we're drawing every 5. Yeah, see now now we're having a little bit of a better timeline. So we're drawing the tick every five frames, uh, every five, yeah, five units. And then there is also the, the cursor. The cursor we're gonna have to be a little bit more pronounced. Okay, that's good. That's already good. We have a more of a sense of a timeline. We're not drawing any, any spawning events yet. We're gonna do that in a second. But first I wanna do some more fixes. First of all, I don't wanna see negative values. So we're gonna go like if, um, ISCR is smaller than zero, then uh, there is a way of ending a loop. Yeah, it's, uh, I just looked up, it's a bit hard to find in the wiki. Um, there is actually no, weirdly no, no page for this, but um, the break statement apparently uh, ends a loop. So let's do that. Um, so yeah, then break, right? Um, I think that will work. So break basically means that uh, the loop is terminated immediately, I think. Uh, let's try that. Uh, yeah, but see, now we're not drawing anything. Huh. So wait, the number is high here and low here. It should be the other way around. It should be, yeah, it makes sense. Okay, so um, we do have to do something like 21 minus i minus 10, like, like this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, this, this makes more sense. And now you can see the, the loop is terminated correctly. Uh, okay, uh, good, 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 good. Um, right, so this worked, this is good. We're, we're drawing uh, the, the timeline correctly and we have like an, a cursor number basically and we have like the uh, numbers every five values, five increments. Um, something I want to fix now is that um, the digits, number of digits in, in numbers are changing. I want to Kind of like always expected that the number, I kind of like reset the, the digit to always four characters. I'm going to call it um, 2STR 
um, so the to string uh, n to string num uh, there's gonna be a value um, there is gonna be a length that I want it to have and there maybe there's gonna be also a sure uh, let's go to ch um, character that I want to fill in the missing digits so they basically I'm gonna take a number I'm gonna convert that to, to into string and if the string is shorter than the specified length the L length then I'm gonna add padding to that string so it's always uh, the L length right so we're gonna do like um, a local local v uh, SV equals um, to string V so we're gonna change the value into a string and then we're gonna go if SV if hashtag SV is smaller than length then then we have to do something otherwise we're gonna return uh, SV um, so if the string that we have is shorter than we specified string then we have to first of all we have to um, calculate the difference maybe local 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 diff equals hashtag SV minus L so that's kind of how many characters we have to add and then we're gonna go for I equals one to diff do and then we're gonna go um, SV dot dot uh, SV equals the character this here dot dot SV Right? We're adding a character at the, at the beginning of the string to pad it out. Um, yeah. Now, one thing I'm going to do, I'm that, that character here at the beginning, I'm going to set a default here. So we're going to go uh, local ch um, equals ch or just like a space. And that should get us um, our strings formatted correctly. Uh, now we can uh, apply this in here we can be like uh, we can do it late in here to string to string number now it's gonna be four characters and just so we see the difference we're gonna add a plus here so we're gonna we should get padding with pluses it did not work how is that how is that just work like what what I mm. okay let's do some 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 testing outside of the of that thing. So let's do like um, here. Let's do like a debug. I equals two string n uh, forty five four plus. It's forty five. It seems like maybe this is never executed. Test. Okay, it does the thing. Oh, the diff is negative. Ah, that's the problem. <laughs> okay, I did some testing here. I, it, I figured out that this is the wrong way around. It should be L minus like this. This is, this is the, this was the problem. <laughs> this was the problem all along. Okay. Um, yeah, so this looks good. Uh, let me <laughs> remove the debugging. I did some debugging to <laughs> make sure I understand what's happening. Okay. Yeah, yeah. See, now we have like the pluses at the beginning to pad out the strings so we don't have any layout issues. That's good. Uh, but now we can remove this and revert this to, to just the space. Um, let's go to the draw function here and then we can remove this. It should be a fine. Yeah, okay. Good. So now you can see we have like this beautiful. Um, we maybe don't need that. We maybe maybe that's that's fine to just be like here, right? I mean, when we go to the quadruple digits, it looks a little bit odd. Yeah, I mean, we maybe do do need that after all. We don't want it to be so close to the edge. Okay, so um, so yeah, we have our timeline now. Um, now what I want to do is I want to draw the actual, um, you know, spawn events on the timeline. This is gonna be wildly inefficient. Um, so <laughs> just, just like to make sure that you know what, what what's uh, coming towards you. So um, 
I'm going to do something like local um, ends equals um, SPVN LST, a spawn list. Um, I want to uh, have a function that goes through our uh, spawn array and gives us all the enemies that spawn at a specific uh, time. And that's going to be the ends. Um, that we're going to put the result in the ends uh, variable in the ends array. So now we have to do that. We have to do that um, that tool. I'm not sure if we're going to put it into tools. It's not quite universal. Mm. Ah, whatever. I'm just going to put it in here. Function. Uh, what did we call the function? Spun spin list. Spin list. So let's write that function real quick. It's going to be highly inefficient. Okay, so basically we're going to do four, um, four next loop basically. Do we have to for next loop for s in all sked do? And then we're going to go if sked one equals scr, then um, there's going to be maybe we need to have a local ret ret return array, right? Going to create a return array and if we find a schedule a spawn schedule that spawns at that time at this scr value then we're going to add that spawn schedule to the to the return list so we're going to go add red uh, uh this is not supposed to be sketch this should be s there we go we're going to add that and then at the end we're going to return the red this is incredibly inefficient and it might actually make our editor lag but we're going to write it like this in an efficient and easy way inefficient and easy way <laughs> and then if we notice that the editor is lagging we can still optimize this a lot um, but for now i'm i'm happy with that solution and then um so right um, so the ends now contains all of the enemies at this moment all of the enemies that should spawn at this moment most of the time it's not going to not going to be any enemies so you know, we're gonna go if ends, if hashtag ends, if we, there's no ends, then do this. But if there are ends, uh, I'm gonna print spawn. Now this didn't quite work. Uh, this might be that we actually don't have enemies spawning at these locations because the problem is we are doing it only every five frames. <laughs> so uh, we actually have to do it every um, like every five lines. We have like we only draw the actual number every five lines, but we actually have to draw it every line. Like we have to check for the enemy spawns every line. Um, so we're gonna do something like this, uh, and then or hashtag ends is greater than zero. Still not working. Today is not a good day. Today is not a good day. Yeah, the, the first entry is the, is the spawning timing, but it somehow doesn't work. It doesn't, oh right, maybe I'm printing in the long location. Yeah, yeah. Let's do something like this. Still don't see the spawning. Why is this causing me so much distress? I don't understand. Oh, if hashtag ends is equals like this. Ah, yeah, there we go, there we go, there we go. So now you can see in certain locations you see enemies spawning. That's good. Right, so you see now on our timeline we have marked, you know, the different locations that we are spawning things. We spawning something at number 200, we're spawning something at 195, 193, 190, 185. You can kind of see a schedule of the spawn. Sometimes something that's weird is that we always see the spawn here. Why is that? Ah, okay, so <laughs> the problem is that <laughs> we have to do other way around. <laughs> we have to do it the other way around. Ah, okay, we, we are spawning too much stuff. Okay, good, now, now we can see. Okay, now we can clearly see the, the different places where enemies are spawning. Uh, that's good. 
Um, something I don't like is that every time we're spawning, we see a number and that's like kind of creates a lot of numbers and I, I don't need to see that, that number that often. I think we might want to like separate these. So print numbers separately from the spawning stuff. Uh, so let's do that real quick. Um, so we do like it like this. So this is the number printing and then we're going to go if uh, number of enemy spawns is greater than zero then mm -hmm. uh, we don't need this here anymore we're gonna copy this here and here we're gonna just print spawn mm. one two three four like this. Right, so now we see enemy spawns, um, but they are, um, they don't necessarily have a number associated with them. Okay, good, good, this is good. Um, but, you know, why are we doing this timeline? We obviously want to kind of interact with this timeline somehow. So um, before we go there, first of all, I want to make sure that I actually cannot scroll to the negative uh, place. So we, I cannot actually scroll below zero. Here in update function, um, when we're pressing up and down, uh, I want to be like uh, scroll equals um, max zero scroll. Yeah, so now we cannot scroll below zero. Actually, we cannot scroll to zero. And why can't we scroll to zero? What, what, why? It's one. I can scroll to one, but I cannot scroll to zero. I have, I have a suspicion. Sneaking suspicion. Ah, oh, see, when we are at scroll zero, that's actually the, like the numbers are not quite correct. We do the math on the numbers a bit wrong. So let's do the math better. Uh, I think it's yeah. Now it's better. So this is actual zero now. All right, so why am I doing this this timeline stuff? Because I want to now add um, some UI to be able to spawn enemies at a very specific moment in time. Right now I'm clicking here. I don't think that's as ideal because again, the enemies are, when they're on the screen, the spawning has already happened. So for example, here I clicked an enemy and that actually made the enemy spawn at a negative spawning location because in order for the enemy to be already on the screen at time zero, it would have had to have spawned previously in time to be in, to have the time to fly into the screen, right? So that's not ideal. What I want to be doing or what I want to have like this control to be able to say, I want to spawn an enemy at moment 208. And if I do that, then the enemy should spawning off screen and then I scroll up and then I would see the sc enemy scrolling in, right? Let's do here on the refresh map, let's do something like, we're gonna add local LNE. And we're gonna get uh, local LNE equals this. And then we're gonna add a menu LNE, and then we're gonna be like add LNE. We want to add a button, and that button is gonna be the, our act. First of all, we're gonna add a button that is gonna be like, uh, oh, <laughs> that's too much, and that is gonna be just like the current, the current uh, uh, scroll value because uh, you know the scroll value is is. Is, should be very clear to us. And right now, I don't think it's quite as clear as it could be. Um, so we're gonna take this. Scroll. One, two, three. Uh, there's not gonna be any command associated with it. Um, the position, I'm not really sure about the position, to be honest. Uh, but I know that um, the location is gonna be around 64. We're gonna see about that. 
uh, see, uh, the color is gonna be just like white. Let's see if white is okay. Uh, there's some problem here. Uh, and there's probably a comma value, a uh, comma missing. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah, yeah, let's try that. Hmm, it didn't work at all. Are we not refreshing the map maybe uh, in a in update function? We are refreshing the map. Maybe we should refresh the map at the end. Right, yeah, yeah, we're not drawing the buttons. We're drawing, we're drawing this stuff. Um, we don't really actually have the, the menu stuff. So yeah, let's do like a, like a menu function. So let's just draw like draw menu. Function draw menu. I think we had that in the in the sprite function, and we just didn't put it in our um, template in our editor template. Uh, okay, so we want to draw the map sex. We want to do the X scroll. We want to draw the menu on top of everything, even on top of the timeline, but not on top of the cursor. Right, here is our little button. Mm, is that in the correct spot? It's not, it's horizontally at the correct spot. It's vertically not quite at the correct, correct spot. So let's go like, like, like this maybe? No, like this. Yeah, it seems good. So now we have like this little button here uh, that clarifies a little bit more, I think, you know, what time what time we are uh, editing currently, what time value we scrolled to. And then the idea is that at the uh, right, like here on, 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 on the other side of the, of the dash, I want to maybe then add like a button, that like a plus button that allows us to create a spawn at this specific moment. And I know this is not quite as easy as just like clicking and creating enemies. That's kind of a little bit more uh, around the corner, you know, but I think this gives us a better control over where enemy spawning, because I don't think this is how we're gonna create enemy spawns. Like this, this is a good way to spam enemies, but it's not a very precise way of editing where things are happening. It's kind of like um, you relinquish control here a little bit. Okay, so uh, we're adding this line here, um, and then I'm gonna actually use the same function that we have well, first of all, no. Let's let me add let me add this this plus button. So again, we're gonna add a button. We're gonna make it a plus button, and it's gonna be like this. And the exposition is I'm not sure exactly what the exposition is gonna be. Um, let's go like plus twenty. Okay, there's our plus button. It's not. You're gonna have to find the correct value. Yeah, that seems okay. Let me let me make it sure that it aligns with the uh, with this. Mhm. Mm that doesn't quite align. But maybe I don't want it to align. Maybe maybe that's okay. By the way, uh, maybe we we can make it a little bit more compact. I was thinking maybe about doing something like this. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah. So then we can go twenty eight here. Let's see, this seems good. This seems good. So now we have this little plus button, and then we can like we basically scroll to the to the place where we want to be, and then we're gonna press X, and then that will create hopefully an enemy. Um, there is still one thing I want to tweak, which is um, I don't at any given line in our timeline. I'm not going to just like show spawn. I want to actually show the enemies that are spawning at this location. Um, so instead of just drawing spawn, I'm actually want to here. I'm actually want to start um, printing the uh, numbers of the enemies that we're spawning here. So something like local s equals nothing. And then we're gonna add the S here. And then we're gonna go for uh, I equals uh, one, two, hashtag ends do. I always do the for next loop instead of the for and all. Maybe that's, that's not good. <laughs> um, and then we're gonna do, go like S 
uh, equals s dot dot ends i. Um, now the number of the enemy that we're spawning here, I think that's number two. Let me let me, let me check. Uh, table. Uh, yeah, that's we always have enemy not one at this, at currently, so we 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 we're spawning the second entry in this table. So that's the number of the enemy. Um, yeah, and then a dot dot space, so they're space separated. All right. So now you see the one. That is kind of like the number of the enemy that we're spawning here. Right. So now the idea is that when I select a line that has an enemy spawn, I want to actually also have a, a little button there indicating that there is an enemy that's already spawning in this location. So we, we kind of have like a data row the way we have it in the table, right? When we run this, here we have like individual little boxes corresponding to individual entries on our data. And I want to kind of also show these boxes that, you know, showing that, you know, there is like this enemy, this enemy, this enemy spawning, and I can maybe click on the boxes and interact with them somehow. So I don't have an, to have the enemy on the screen to be able to interact with it. We will be also interacting with enemies on the screen, um, but I also want to have like this additional level of UI that gives me a, a little bit better control. I'm not in love with the dash. Right, so now that we have created, we we're doing this, I also want to um, add these buttons for the individual enemies. We're gonna use the same code. And I'm gonna go if ends, if hashtag ends is greater than zero, then, and also I want to do this loop here like this. So I want to um, get the enemies at the current spawn scroll value. And then uh, that creates a list of enemies that, that spawn at the current scroll value, which usually is gonna be one enemy, but sometimes there's two enemies spawning at the same time. Um, and then I'm gonna loop through this list and for each enemy, I want to create a button. So we're gonna copy this code here. Um, right, so the text is gonna be ENS2, so that's the number of the enemy, like the which enemy type we're spawning basically. Um, it's gonna be just one character for now, but I think we will want to default to like, at least two digits because we're gonna have at least more than 10, 10 enemies. A command we're gonna set to nothing yet, but we're gonna change it soon. Uh, also, I want to have like a, a local, um, um, let's call it, um, UIX and we're going to start at 28. So this is going to be the, the X position of the button, the next button that we can draw in this line. Uh, and we're going to draw it here in UIX. And then after we draw a button, we add uh, a value to it that's going to be mm, like a five, I think. That's the spacing between the buttons. We kind of like advance this variable every time we spawn a new button so we know where the next button goes. And then this final button goes also UIX. Let's try that. Mm, is, this didn't work. Ah, because um, we, not, we, we don't have ISCR, uh, ICR, we have scroll. Ooh. Ah, I think we, uh, two string, we need to do a two string here. Yeah, there we go. What is happening there? What did you do? Oh, right, 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 right. Um, I do it like this. There we go. Ta-da! Um, the spacing between the button needs to be bigger. There we go. So now you can see there's two buttons. There's the here, for example, we have two enemies. Um, both of them are type one enemies. <laughs> it's the only one enemy we have right now. And we have a button, additional button to um, add more enemies to this. Now, something we cannot actually do right now is we cannot actually, we cannot actually select anything. So maybe I want to maybe uh, have an ability to select stuff. Uh, let's, can we remove the C, the color? I don't like the color. Uh, let's set it to 13. Um, 13. Okay. 
Okay, so now in the update map function, um, when we going sideways, first of all, when we change the scroll value, I want the, what, what is the, um, is it cell X? Cur, cur X and cur Y. Okay, so I want cur X to be set reset to one. And then if this is happening, if left and right, then I want cur x to uh, minus equal one plus equal one. So we can scroll side, like we can select buttons left and right. Let's try that. Yeah, we definitely can switch now between the two buttons. Okay, that's good. Okay, um, there's some problems. Uh, yeah, I can scroll off. I can scroll to a button that doesn't exist, so I don't like that. Um, also, I think we should default to two. Um, so we're gonna go always two. And because the, the idea here is that I always want by default the, the plus button to be selected. I never actually want to select this button here. That's actually just like, just like an indicator only. I, that's actually not a button I want to be able to interact with. Um, I just want to be interacting with the enemies and also maybe add uh, new enemies, right? Um, so that's good. Uh, I want to maybe now also limit the cursor so I can, cannot actually select the leftmost button. Um, so we're gonna do something like a cur x equals mid to cur x um, hashtag menu uh, cur y. All right, because we're refreshing the map at the end. We probably should refresh the map at the beginning. Yeah. Okay. So I now I cannot select the leftmost uh, entry. Maybe the leftmost entry should be a bit brighter. Let's set it to six. Um, because I don't quite like the color. Yeah, yeah, that, that looks a lot better. Okay. Good. One last thing for this episode is I want to make the um, buttons double digits because I think we're going to have at least double digits enemies. I'm not sure if we're going to have triple digits enemy. I, don't, mm, mm, I hope we're not having that many enemies, but double digits makes sense to me. Um, so we're going to use the same function that we had previously here. That is going to be this um, two string number. <laughs> Why do I call it N? I'm not sure. Um, and we're going to use that to put in the, um, to format the numbers of the enemies. And this is one of those things, maybe we have to be more descriptive with the enemies. Maybe we have to give the enemies names or at least like, like shortcuts of letters um, that describe the enemy. So it's kind of like UFO or a BOS for boss, you know. Um, but that's going to be like metadata questions. Um, so. Uh, yeah, we're gonna have to deal with this later on, I think. For now, I want to uh, be here. All right, um, I want to format the enemy. So we're gonna take the number of the enemy. It has to be at least two characters. Uh, and we're gonna do leading zeros. And then we're gonna take this out. And here, this is where we have the enemies. We're gonna have to, we have to do it like this. Then double digits on the width. And then also I think we need to add at least four to the spacing between the, between the different. So now we have zero one. Yeah, that, I think that looks a bit more substantial. That, that feels a little better. So now we can see exactly where enemies are spawning. And I want you to pay attention to, that's one of the reasons why we did this. So look at this V formation. I, I told you, we're gonna talk about the V formation. It's kind of weird, right? Because the V formation looks like a V here, but um, something that we already saw when we're playing the game is that the, those enemies are not spawning in this formation. That's not what they do. What they do is they actually spawn in time. So 
you can see how, you know, now the first, the, like the tip of the V is spawning, the first enemy is spawning here at, at, at uh, scroll value 71. And then you scroll a little bit up and now the, the next two enemies are spawning. You can actually see them on top of the screen. The next two enemies are spawning left and right from that enemy. And now there is there there's another left and right spawning. They're a bit um, offset in time from each other. And then two more enemies are spawning. And then that's it, right? So we, we get this V formation by um, the, the simple fact that we're spawning the enemies um, uh, you know, spread out in time. And we see them scroll in from the screen because they're you know, spawning after each other. And that is why we don't see that V formation in the game because the enemies move differently in the game. In the, enemies, in, in the game, the enemies spawn and they like fly in very fast. So this V shape is not retained in the game um, because you know we have one enemy that flies in and then the two enemies fly in and then three enemies fly in and that uh, V formation breaks apart. In order to get that V formation in the game, in order to see that V formation in the game, what we would have to do is we would have to spawn all of the enemies at the same time and change their position. They change the position where they're spawning off screen. Um, so this timeline gives us the ability to kind of like analyze this kind of like these weird occurrences and kind of like understand how they work. So that's why I decided to have like these kind of like this kind of like um, timeline element in here. And yeah, it adds a little bit of noise and it's a bit of a weird element. And maybe it's not the best way of doing this, but uh, I think let's let's roll with this. Let's see how, how far we can get with this kind of like design principle. For now, let's move on to the doggy zone. That's right, the doggy zone. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, the doggy zone, very clear. Two big challenges for the doggy zone and generally the next two things that we're gonna deal with. First challenge for the doggy zone is uh, we can now, we have buttons. Now I want to interact with those buttons. And I want to interact with those buttons in two ways. I want to obviously use cur like the, the keyboards to interact with those buttons as, as we had pre before. So I want to be able to press X and execute those buttons. But also, I want to be able to click on those buttons. I want to, my buttons to be responding to the mouse. That's the first challenge. Second challenge is how are we going to show when an enemy spawns, if the enemy spawns off screen? The only way for us to see an enemy, that's kind of like a big challenge, is that when they have already, after they have already spawned. But what if there is an enemy off screen somewhere and it spawns and we, what kind of UI are we going to use to show that now an enemy has spawned? That's a bit of a design and UI challenge, and I'm not sure if I have a good solution for this, but maybe you have better solution for this. So that's gonna be another challenge for the doggy zone. For now, we're gonna move on to this last segment of each episode where I say a big thank you, a huge shout out to the beautiful people who are supporting me on coffee. Thank you so much for your support and thank you so much to the newcomers this month. So as of the 2nd of July, I'm recording this on 3rd of July, but yeah, as of the 2nd of July, we have um, the following newcomers and that's gonna be a yogurt, uh, Tom Kirby Green, Zan, Mezer, Progress Steak, and kind of a new supporter, but kind of an old supporter, Squidlight also joined as a subscriber. Thank you so much for your support, guys. Yeah, and also I wanted to maybe um, um, do a bit of a feature. Just yesterday, something really amazing happened. I mean, now that the video has released, it's been already a month ago. <laughs> but uh, Louis Chapman just released an incredible shmup, the incredible shmup that I already showed you before, called Calican. It is available on itch.io. It's not available in a Lex Lawful format, at the time that we're recording this. It is a really beautiful uh, bullet hell shmup inspired by this tutorial. It's already out there, first stage is out there. I'm pretty sure he will be working on more stages, I think, but I've seen already people playing this and, and you know sharing high scores. This is an incredible looking shmup and you should absolutely check it out. Uh, I'm gonna put a link down in a doobly-doo. The name of the game is also Kali Khan. You can also uh, search for it on itch.io. Yes, 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 we're working on our schedule editor and things are a bit weird. The UI is a little bit weird, but the reason for that is that it's kind of like a weird editor. It's, we're kind of editing weird things. But don't worry, we're gonna get there. See you next time around, guys. Bye-bye.